Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you guys could subscribe here, that means a lot to me. And also to the Tobin and Leroy Show, which you can watch weekdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the WQAM YouTube page. Miami Heat right now sitting after all the results yesterday. Eighth in the Eastern Conference as they get ready for the Atlanta Hawks to wrap up their regular season road schedule uh, tomorrow night. And, you know, it's a tough one. I don't know if you guys saw the Sixers game, but Tyrese Maxey absolutely uh, obliterating the – well, they weren't obliterating. I mean, like, San Antonio had that game, and then Tyrese Maxey happened. He kicks to Nick Batum, sends it to overtime. He ends up with a 52-burger, uh, and um, that was all she wrote. So the Sixers right now sitting themselves pretty above the Miami Heat right now. They would end up hosting – that 7-8 matchup in a play-in. And Miami will uh, try and rally. They really have, you know, no other recourse right now other than to sweep these last four. How much faith you have in it? I could get everybody uh, feeling a little bit skeptical right now. A couple of pieces of news out of yesterday's game that I wanted to get to as far as comments from the players because I was watching on Bally, and Bally did not have, uh, I don't know how long the players took to talk, but uh, Bally did not have anybody on the coverage. So Miami... The Heat ended up posting some post-game coverage from the players. And there were some interesting things said, particularly with Jimmy Butler, but pro probably mostly interesting from Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier, uh, he said that he shouldn't have gone. Uh, and this part was not put up by the, uh, the Heat YouTube page. And uh, he told reporters from Anthony Chang's column in the Miami Herald he says I mean I never make I never like to make excuses but I shouldn't have went today I shouldn't have played I felt like I hurt the team by trying to be a warrior and get out there and I feel I hurt myself and what he's referring to is he had a neck injury that was bugging him um so that was uh that was a bit of a bummer to hear that Terry Rozier felt like he had to gut through this whole deal and um, this was him on his neck and how it supposedly happened in his mind. Was it from that fall in Houston when you went down early? Were all the falls? Really, I think it's, it might be the traveling, the sleeping. I don't know, but I never felt nothing like this. It's worse than a crook. But I know what my, you know, the guy's gonna get me right. So he hasn't dealt with anything like it, but it's uh, worse than like a little neck soreness. And he felt like about it. And and to be fair. Uh, Terry did not play a good game against the Indiana Pacers, and it was a question because Eric Spolstra had said, "Like, ah, it was more of a, uh, it was, it was, you know, more of a riding the hot hand type of thing." And when he was asked about it, he said it was a joint decision, but Spo was going with what he went with at the end of that game. Um, but definitely, uh, definitely a little bit demoralizing that you're now at another point. Like, this is this is the thing with the Heat, man. And they're not the only team dealing with this, so I'm not I'm not here to make excuses for the team because they've definitely had some golden opportunities away. So before you guys think I'm making excuses for the Miami Heat, trust me when I tell you, still furious about the loss yesterday. Choking away to to Philadelphia was inexcusable. Right there with last year when they were playing for the sixth seed against the new uh, the Brooklyn Nets and they lose by thirty. Um. It was, it was bad, and, and so I'm not here to say, hey, this is a reason why it happened. It's just interesting that you feel like you head over a hurdle of getting Tyler Hero and the whole healthiest we've been. Most bodies available, but Terry dealing with the neck, Duncan Robinson walking around like Frankenstein because he's dealing with this horrible back thing and has not looked to his comfortable self either. Um is definitely been something to to keep an eye on. And and look, everybody's been dealing with stuff in this in this Eastern Conference that outside of Boston has been a bit of a mess. You know, Bucks dealing with their injuries, Knicks dealing with their injuries. Philly obviously had the the cloud of uh you know Joel Embiid and he comes back for two games out of these last three and they already leapfrog you on the standings. So Miami had their chances and that's and that's even with them dealing with you know, 35, 36 different starting lineups and all of that, that entails, you know, the, the, there's definitely, I think, sound reasons for Miami having as inconsistent a record as they do. And they can pass last year's win total with their next win or uh, equal it. 
um, and they can pass last year's win total. But I get why everybody is in the same mindset that they're at, that they are meandering through the play, which makes me want to get to these Jimmy Butler comments. And so Jimmy Butler, um, when he spoke, he was discussing a couple of things that really stood out to me for Miami, for, for, from Jimmy. And the first thing is, that it, it's a little bit of a, a tale of two feelings from Jimmy, because I think as a leader, he wants to stay positive, but also I do think there's frustration in them being in this spot, where they do, in his mind, make things really difficult for themselves. And uh, this was him on the idea if Miami does have to go the play-in route again, which it seems very much like they will. If we end up in the play-in, we end up in the play-in. Uh, we all have a job to do anyways. Uh, but, like, that's that's how we've always played. We've never made it easy on ourselves. Why make it easy now? Yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's definitely been the theme, especially over uh, the last couple of years. It is fascinating. They've been such a fascinating team in Jimmy's era. And I, I've, I've definitely noticed over the last, you know, couple of weeks with this team, people are discussing, you know, what the legacy of this team will be and, I think when I say that, I mean the Jimmy Butler build with Bam, with Tyler, with Duncan, as those guys have been there kind of for the full uh, ride and have been invested in by the front, uh, the front office and have done everything. I feel bad for Duncan playing the way that he is right now, knowing that he's physically dealing with stuff because, man, he had a really, really great year. I thought he was one of the stories of the year for Miami, especially with Tyler going through the injuries that he has. But, yeah, they have made them – you know, they have made things tough on themselves. They've gone through a lot of obstacles. Even though you're the one seed, you'll, you'll remember, like, the the time that Bam was out, the time that Jimmy was out, the time that Kyle Lowry was away from the team for personal reasons, uh, P.J. Tucker being uh, old as hell and fighting through stuff. And that all is has been they have to go through a, a lot of adversity to try and get the best out of themselves. I think that the thing that's been frustrating – from that team that lost Eastern Conference Finals Game 7 with Jimmy taking the three, is that when the adversity has hit them, they haven't been able to to reach back and, and find anything. And I think why I find this season a little bit different than the other years, and I'm not counting them out, but you know there would be some times in, uh, in the years, in the last year's season, where like, man, they would get some wins against some quality teams, and you'd be like, wow, all right. That's still in them. Like, they'd always lull you in with, like, oh, they're there. That team that made the Eastern Conference Finals, they can get a signature win, and then they could just break your heart by losing to the most bum-ass team. This team this year has less of that. It's more so they do take care of business for against the, the, the Drex of the league and the teams that they really should beat. But the teams they're kind of even with or the teams that they're a little bit maybe behind, they haven't been able to find that gear to get past them. They really haven't. That has been, I think, the bigger difference with this year. A lot Every game last year, clutch games, down the wire, you know, having to deal with, you know, a shot going in, a shot going out. But even with it, they'd have a couple in there. We'd be you could look back and be like, oh, yeah, but they beat Boston. Oh yeah, but they beat they, they they got one against Milwaukee or they got one against Cleveland last year. You know, like there'd be those handful of wins where you could be like, you see, this team they can still dial it up. And I think this year there's very little proof that Miami has been able to beat the teams that they they go toe to toe with them. I mean, there's been some some competitive games against Denver and there's been competitive games against. Boston, there's been competitive games against, you know, other top tier teams, but like normally Miami has been falling short if that other team is not, you know, had got got one arm tied behind its back. Probably the only time you could really look at it and say they got the complete best of a team that had their best is Milwaukee. And man, Milwaukee has been whew, and that was a weird game because you got like Jovich going off for twenty four, Duncan Robinson, they they lit them up and through. There aren't many examples of that. So when Jimmy says that, you know, we're heading to the play and we like to make things hard on ourselves, yeah, you're making things hard on yourselves, but this is uh, definitely one of those where it feels like you could be setting yourself up for a big-time 
showdown right away with the Boston Celtics, and that is going to be a, 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 a tough task for Miami for sure. But he also mentioned this, which was that the team has to maintain a very positive attitude no matter what the adversity is. And this was an interesting comments from Jimmy. Man, winning out or not, you know, you just always got to keep that same energy. You always got to smile. You always got to realize that it's never as bad as it always seems. And we get to hoop for a living, man. Everybody should be smiling. Everybody should be having fun. And everybody should be enjoying not only playing basketball, but being around one another. Whenever you realize that basketball is a game, no matter if you put food on the table or how important it is to you, um, you just got to have fun and you got to smile, man. So as long as we do that, I know that the wins will come. All right. So like beautiful words from Jimmy Butler. I'm not killing the message. I'm just kind of surprised by the messenger because this guy always seems to know when to put his head down and the team needs to rack up wins and to do this you know, big picture, flowery type of comments of, hey, as long as we're smiling and getting along. And I do think that this is a Heat team. I mean, off the court, I think they chemistry is pretty good, you know, being around them a little bit and seeing how they interact. You know, there were some times I think people said, oh, they're getting sick of each other. But I think some of the young guys, I think Kevin Love has has kept that element for Miami pretty loose. I think they do enjoy the each other's company. I don't know if that's had any bearing on how they've uh, gone about this season. And so to hear Mr. It's That Time and Jim VP know that it's that time, it's the count, it's the meme, and now all of a sudden it's kind of like, yeah, you know, like if we're all good and we have the perspective on this that, hey, good things will come, I was a little surprised to hear that. I do like him saying, like, it's not as bad as you think because it's not. There's probably only one position you don't want to start this thing off with, which is against the Celtics. But if anybody's going to do it, if anybody's going to go and obliterate Boston and and completely destroy everything they worked for and take home court advantage in the first two games of a playoff series, it's that guy right there. So fascinating stuff, but hopefully Miami going into this uh, last four can Get out, gobble up as many as possible and you know maybe improve their situation for where they're at right now.